On this short episode, we're gonna go over some new products that I'm offering with my transmission kits. So I haven't done anything new in a little while uh, other than offering the Magnum F transmissions in all my kits. Um, but now I have two more little things that I'm gonna go over, uh, two little additions to the kits that are gonna make things a lot better for you guys and a lot easier. Um, so I'm gonna go over those and we did an install on Jose's IS300 here behind me. So I'm gonna go over that car a little bit and show you some things that we did. Here are the two new products that I'm going to be including with pretty much all of my transmission kits. So any of the T56 Magnum kits are now going to get this plate and this wiring harness. So the wiring harness is pretty cool. So it, it includes the, uh, the reverse lockout, the speed sensor, and the reverse lights all in one nice clean harness. So it makes it really easy to wire. And the really cool thing, it's not just a bunch of wires connected together so that you can plug them into whatever. Um, this has a little module on here that is controlled with Bluetooth. So you can go into a Bluetooth app in your phone and change the settings. So basically this has your speedo control so you can run your factory speedometer and convert the T56 signal over to work with your factory speedometer. On top of that, it includes the ability to have reverse lockout control. So there's no longer a need to cut down the spring like I used to recommend now this is gonna automatically lock out your reverse solenoid over four mile an hour. Under four mile an hour, you're gonna be able to put it in reverse without any issue. So it's like no switches, no wiring to the ECU. It's all controlled through this one little box. So it's really cool. It comes with a, a little fuse. If you wanna run it to, um, to some, you have to run the power from somewhere in your car so you can run it to a switch source is what you want. And I'd run the fuse in there just to protect the, the Bluetooth module but it makes the wiring so much better and so much less hassle. It's a little bit more money for this, but you do get a nice self-contained harness for the transmission itself. The second product is this index plate. So the QuickTime steel bells that we use, I've started to notice some variances in them and them being slightly off. So QuickTime offers uh, dowels now, so they're called offset dowels, which allow you to move the, the the bell housing on the block around basically to get it where you want it to be. And you can see we put some marks on here because we used this on the install of the IS300. But basically you mount this to the back of the bell housing and then you run a dial indicator around it and you see how close you are to centered, perfectly centered, so that the input shaft on the trans is perfectly centered in the bell housing and in the crank. So what that, what that, why that's important is if you're out of, if you have run out in there, it's basically gonna wear that bearing out on the transmission over time from it not being on center. So it's gonna be riding like almost like an egg shape and it'll eventually wear that bearing out. So these are two really cool products. This one's really important now. Uh, like I said, everyone is, that gets a kit is getting one of these. And then depending on application, like, um, like a Mark III Super is not gonna need this because they are gonna run the mechanical Speedo because they have the mechanical Speedo and the Mark III Super. But most other kits are gonna get both of these products included. Um, there'll be a slight variance in uh, price change to my kits, but other than that, I think this is well worth it and it's going to make everyone's life a lot easier. All right, so we're going to start this thing up and you can hear the, uh, the raw power of an NA2JZ. <laughs> It's really loud it's not my cup of tea but you know it's whatever the customer wants to do but the uh, the trans will hold up to anything he wants to throw at it for sure now so what I'm gonna cover here is dial indicating the bell housing and the first step is to install this plate that comes with all the kits now so all the kits that I ship out now will come with this plate uh, which is an indicator plate it has two dial pins that go into the back of the bell housing so the first thing you want to do before you even put the bell housing on the block is install this plate and then you're gonna go ahead and take four bolts or so and hold this bell housing on to the block. So the one thing you wanna do is make sure the block surface is actually really clean 
so that when that bell housing goes up against there, it can be perfectly uh, aligned as far as uh, front to back. So you don't want it to be offset in any spot from like a burr or you know junk like this here. So you can just take a razor blade and go around there and scrape all this off. Or... All right, as you can see, Rob went around here with that wire brush and cleaned this surface up really good. Even going around all the dowels just to make sure that uh, there's no burrs on there. So everything looks good here. All right, so what you're gonna do is set your dial indicator up so it's on your ring. And then you're gonna hit the zero button on your indicator, or if you have a manual one, you're gonna set the ring to zero. And then you're just gonna go ahead and turn the crank and watch your indicator as it goes around. So you're gonna need two people for this part. So you can see we're starting to get a little bit of out of uh, off center. So six out. So the spec on these um, magnums is five thou so you can see here now right about 180 we're at like 12 thou out so basically if we have a offset dial or dowel that is 0.07 is the minimum one they make that'll get us pretty close to a total of 14 so it'll just be a little bit off so that's what we're going to do we're going to have to use a uh, uh, 0.07 offset dial. So the easiest way to do this and, and the, the way I like the way I do it So I I find the lowest point in this so you're initially gonna set this up. You're gonna zero it It's gonna move all around um, It's gonna go negative and positive probably um, Unless you just happen to perfectly get it at zero on your first try where you start and you zero the gauge so what I would recommend is spin it around find your lowest number so if it's like negative 10 whatever find that spot, stop, zero the gauge there, and then go back around again. And that's gonna be your zero spot. So you're gonna, it's all gonna be positive the rest of the way around. That's gonna give you where um, your zero number is and where your high number is. And that's basically what we did here. So this is where we're like 13 thou out, and this is our zero number. So you can kind of see here how we're gonna set up our offset dowels to try to get the bell housing. One of the cool things I can do here that you guys won't be able to do is I have lots of bells in stock. So we're gonna go ahead and stick another bell on here just to see if it's consistently out or if each bell is out a little bit. Um, and if it's consistently out, technically it could be like the block is out. You know, this one is almost shifted directly up and down. So that could be like um, where they machined um, for the main caps. So that, that's a possibility. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna bolt this one on and we're gonna check it again and go over that. So this is the second bell that we put on here and we're gonna go ahead and check it now. As you can see here, we're going up, we're at five thou. Six, seven, six. So you can, you, this one is definitely not out as much. I mean, seven thou is close to spec. They, they want you to be with five. So this one is a tricky one to, to say whether or not to even mess with it because it's, uh, it's pretty close. But there you can see that um, that the, there's a difference between from bell to bell. So that's why you should always check this just to make sure you're always uh, perfectly lined up. So in the case of this bell, where it's only, you know, seven thou out, what do you do? Because the quick time offset dowels, they only make them in seven thou, 14 thou, and 21 thou. So like the, really the, the smallest size of, um, offset that you're going to want to go for is somewhere around, you know, 14. So that seven will get you basically to that 14 number. So below that, really the only option to, to get at you there without somehow making a custom offset dial, which is not really possible, is to actually go to your, your holes in the bell and file that hole out. Cause I mean, seven thou, to get, to get where you want to be, you're only talking three and a half thou. That's like nothing. I mean, that's, that's hardly anything. So that's like, like three pieces of paper thick, roughly. I mean, so you're going to want to file out this hole in the opposite direction you want to move. So in this case, like we want to move this way. So you'd file it out 
on this bottom left corner at the spot of your highest number and then that way you can shift the bell up a little bit and you have to be like really careful with this i mean you want to take your time a little bit at a time put it back on here tighten it up you know hold it up in the direction you want it to go tighten it down and then check it again so this is a this is one of those ones where it's a little bit trickier because you don't have a number that's that's close i mean it's it's really almost within spec you know you're only two thou out of spec so as long as you can get yourself to where you're within spec that's good so really i mean file the tiniest amount out of the the hole and then try to get it back on there and indicate it again and see if you can get you closer to five thou total if you're looking for a dial indicator you don't have one harbor freight sells this stuff pretty cheap so i think the magnetic base was like 25 bucks and we did the digital one just because it makes it easier for the video to show you what's going on. So it was like 30 bucks for this. So I have like 50 bucks into this and you can use it again and again. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're in the garage, this is something you wanna have as a tool. So the next step here, we had to take the flywheel back off cause we gotta remove these dial pins. And there was no way to get in there with that flywheel still on there on this car. So basically we're gonna, we're gonna heat these dial pins up a little bit and try to remove them with vice grips. That's gonna be, our, as you can see, Rob here is heating up the block around the dowel pin. So you wanna heat up the material around the dowel pin, obviously, so that you can. So while Rob tries to take that our dowel pin, I'm gonna show you these offset dowels from QuickTime. And these are the 7,000, and you can see they have a little flat spot on the side that is gonna stick outside the block. And those spots are at 90 and 270 so they're going to be the exact uh opposite or the 90 degrees from your your minute like your tallest spot and your lowest spot so you can see there all the more that seven thou is <laughs> it's almost nothing there you can barely feel it with your fingernail almost so um one thing to note here so this is the side that my fingers are on is the side that goes in the block so here's the dowel that we just removed. And you can see here, I have them lined up where this was within the block and where this, this one from QuickTime is. And you can see the QuickTime one is about, I would say two millimeters too long. So uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to cut these down uh, so that it will fit in the block all the way. Otherwise, if this is sticking out too far past, you've just uh, made your offset dowel pin useless. So you wanna make sure that you're able to get this thing bottomed out to where the line is in the block. So I'm gonna to have to machine two millimeters off of here. Uh, it's gonna be tricky at home in a garage. I have a bridge port, so I'm gonna use my bridge port to do this. So this is, this is my trusty uh, old bridge port that I use pretty much every day. Um, one of my, the best things I've ever bought. But you can see here, I'm gonna to try to knock off about two millimeters off of these, set these up in my vise. And let's see what we can do here. Now that I've got it done on the bridge port, and you can see that the, the side that goes in the block over here is now um, damn near just the same size. So it should fit in there perfectly. I'm gonna ask, uh, I'm gonna talk to QuickTime over there and see if they can they can take two millimeters off of these for all of them, so that way we don't have to run into this in the future. Um, but until then, you may have to do this uh, if you get. So you can see here, I have these dowel pins. They're not pushed in all the way yet, just because I'm setting them up. But you can see the flat sides here on both of them, and they're both like kind of leaning in the same direction. So kind of like like this. And that lines up the same with how our bell was out. Took the flywheel so. back out to get those pins out. We've noticed that when you try to put the dowel indicator on the end of the crank, it doesn't have enough strength. Uh, the magnet doesn't to hold it in place. So we're gonna have to put the flywheel back on so that it has a better uh, base to grab a hold of. Otherwise, it's just gonna push you all around when you're trying to turn it and you're not gonna be um, an accurate reading. I mean, the flat spots on each side here and here and we're pointing up to like 11 o'clock with the flat spots. So if I show you here, you can see the flat spot and the flat spot. And so the, the lip or the side 
that is higher is on the lower side here. So we're trying to pull downward this way. We're trying to pull the bell down this way to offset our 13 thou out. So we're trying to move the bell down this way. So our dowels are shifted down at about 11 o'clock, identically on both sides. So now that we have this, we'll go ahead and put it back together and we should get a pretty close to, uh, to spot on reading. Okay, so now we're ready to check the final indication here after we got these dowels in in place. So you can see there, one thou. That's looking a lot better. Two, three. Looks like it's going back down. So we're in good shape. So we're within three thou, which is well within spec. So we're in good shape. So now we can go ahead and take the bell back off, install the clutch uh, completely, and then uh, we're ready to then reinstall the bell again, and we're all set to go. One of the things I've, I've uh, found through trial and error is that some of the plates work better than others. So this is the one that I'll include in the kit, and you can see it has a giant ring around it. The advantage to that gives you lots of room to get your dial indicator in there, and it actually gives you more precise control uh, of your measurements in this larger diameter hole. The other one here, this is um, another brand, and you'll see that it's kind of uh, more rectangular. So if you have a tight tunnel where you're trying to do this in the car, it can interfere, and you can actually see I cut this down to get it to fit at one time. And then it has this smaller hole, which is a little bit harder to get your dial indicator into there. So this one is really nice. This is the one that I'm gonna include, and I, I bought a whole bunch of these. You can actually see them over there on the shelf next to all the drive shafts on the right I have I think 50 of these in stock right now. So, so here I have a Tremec Magnet Math and the harness is installed. And you can see there is the speed sensor. There's the reverse lockout. And we come up over around. And here is the reverse lights. And then that's basically how you kind of orientate, orientate the, uh, the harness. And then here's where all the wires come out. So um, a little explanation of the wires here. The, the two reds with the brown stripe are your reverse lights. So you'll just connect them into your existing uh, harness um, for the reverse lights. The two purple wires are outputs. You can use either one of those. Um, I generally use the purple and white one, uh, but it doesn't really matter because you can control both through the, uh, through the software. The black is just a ground. You'll ground that to the transmission or somewhere under the body. And then the red one is just a 12 volt switched power that you're gonna run to uh, basically anywhere that's key on in the car and that's it. That's all you have to do and then you just uh, download the app on your phone the bowler app and It'll um, Allow you to play with the, the settings and get it to where you want it to be um, They I also have the The kit for the regular Magnum too. So there's a separate kit because the Speed sensor is a little different between the regular Magnum and the Magnum F. So I have both of them available and uh, like I said, these will be with pretty much every kit going forward. Here you can see the all-in-one installed, all the pigtails in place. We temporarily zip tied it on here. You could probably put a bolt through here on the Magnum F if you wanted to or mount it to another spot. But we just have it temporarily on there with the zip tie. And you can see here we have it ran up towards the front. And on the right side up here, can't really see it but that's the reverse lights pigtail and then up here where it was unterminated we now have a ground wire going here to the bell housing we have the signal wire coming out and I used the purple and white one on this car and we went to the stock uh, plug on the transmission so we have our speed output going to the where the factory wire would go output wise to the dash so we can convert. And then we have, um, this is our power wire which runs up to the fuse box up front. We stole 12 volts from there. And then the last two wires is right here in the factory harness and that is for the reverse lights. So that's it, it's five wires basically and you're all set. So next I'm gonna go in here and open up the Bowler app and we'll set it up. Now you can see here, 
I have the car set up and I change the settings in the bowler app. So when I put the car in gear, then we give the throttle. You'll see our speedo starts to rise. And this, this car is a little bit different because the speedo is in kilometers per hour. He put an aftermarket uh, cluster in here and it's everything's in kilometers and uh, the tack is actually off as well. But I can probably actually adjust this so it would read the mile per hour since it, and it would match up with the kilometers per hour even though it's not really kilometers. We could make it read like it's mile per hour just to make it read right for him. So uh, we got this all set up and I think this is ready to go.